Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another rock pooling vlog part two in a three part series I am doing where on one of the lowest tides of the entire year, I am showing you what you can find on lower shore, on the middle shore and what you can find on the upper shore and showing you the differences so that if you want to go rock pooling, you can know where to look for different things and also see what part of the shore you want to head to and prefer. In yesterday's episode, in the last episode part of this, I did the lower shore and we found some absolutely wonderful wonderful species so go and check that out first or check that out after this video but today we're exploring the mid shore this is the main part of the shore it's the part that's out of the water for at least a couple of hours every day and um here is the kind of place where you still have to adapt to survive against drying out and it just leads to some really interesting mixes of creatures that are here lots of competition really we can find a lot of stuff on the mid shore we could find anything today and i am so so excited for it if you want to learn more about the mid shore and about how species survive here and exactly what you know conditions and temperatures and desiccation and drying out and all of that different stuff check out my documentary episode of when the tide retreats all about survival on the shore and i break it down the specifics of exactly how species live in each of these zones but today we are just going to enjoy and explore and see what we can find <laughs> Here is a little mycid shrimp, a little common shore crab. Can you spot him? He's pretty well blended in there. Some gorgeous coral weed, which is of just, of course, always a lovely find and quite common around the midshore. This I am so excited about. I finally got some footage of a butterfish where it wasn't scared and flapping around. I just saw this making its way through the rock pool and got some lovely video footage. netted dog whelk, some gorgeous chitons and anemones. This is a teeny weeny juvenile long armed porcelain crab and this is my one of my favourite type of limpets, it's the tortoise shell limpet, I mean that's pretty incredible right? Here is a great example of two of the same species can look completely different. They're both beetle anemones. This is lovely bright red with a blue ring. And this is brown with green stripes. And they're all the same species. This is a flat top shell, one of the prettiest shells on snails you can find on the UK coastlines. Compare that with the much more cone shaped and dark uh, colour of the uh, common periwinkle and this one seems to have fallen asleep eating a bit of seaweed. These are all hydroids sticking up on the bottom of a rock and this is a teeny itsy bitsy weeny juvenile brittle star. Some very well camouflaged limpets. Believe it or not, all of these species have been found while I'm doing this time lapse and just walking around this one giant rock pool, which is really awesome. And the time lapse doesn't show it very well, but I'm about to lose my mind now. I found a new frog! I found oh, slipped. I found a new frog! I found a new frog! Yes, yes! Oh my goodness! I'm gonna show. Oh, I need to show you. I need to show you. And I need to come down and stop going around all over the place. Come on!
gorgeous little fluff bum of a nudie prank is I think Oncodorus lavinii, which is uh, the Latin name for a species of nudibranch. They often just get Latin names because they're so rare, obscure. They, um, you know, they don't get given uh, common names. But I think maybe Fluffbottom should be the common name of this because it's so cute. So nudibranchs are sea slugs, and I mean, just look at them. They're so much better than land slugs. They they put land slugs to shame. Land slugs give slugs a bad name because. These, the sea slugs are just so unbelievably cool and you can see it moving um, its mantle at the bottom which is basically it's kind of foot it's all made of muscle it how it you know squelches around and there's two kind of different um, upwards appendages you can kind of see on the front that have slightly got lines to them and they look a bit like ears and that's its sensory kind of organs and it's using that to sense the water for different chemicals and different things so it can hunt for food you know detect if maybe there's a predator around in the water and you can just see them wiggling there kind of taking them in and if i get the camera a bit too close sometimes they like shoot in um, just out of a bit of protection but as this cute little fluff bum turns around and the reason i'm calling nudie branks fluff bums is because at the back you will see a ring of these different um these different kind of appendages it's different difficult to tell with this species because there's lots of little teeny weeny knobbly bits to it but at the back is this ring of um this ring of gills is what it is and it's these really delicate um frilly appendages and it uses the frills because it gives it more surface area and that means it can get more oxygen in from the water and so it's actually you know breathing through its fluffy bum that is so special that is so cool i cannot believe it that is genuinely genuinely amazing how fantastic yes i mean i just said in the episode before about nudibranchs and not finding them and that we should put a dance out there and thank you for the dances i'm sure that made a difference despite the fact that this is literally being filmed like 20 minutes after i said that but whatever oh my god i think that's a little doris i love the fact that nudibranchs that that kind of sea lemon family has doris in their latin name so you get to call them all doris like perfection itself as nudibranchs are it's so tiny it was so cute i i it was it was like it was like me saying i can't find nudibranchs on the lower shore and it was like no mid shore is awesome too first rock pool one of the first rocks boom dropped to nudibranch in i mean the last time i found one was a year ago like a whole year ago and that's the only one i found so like you have found like little sea hairs and stuff since then but only only one like you can't odds that that is so incredible just when you discount a nudibranch the rocky shore surprises you and that just goes to show how incredible the life is here and how much you can find we couldn't leave the mature without showing the wonderful hermit crabs that are especially kind of prevalent on the the east coast of scotland there are just tons and they are one of my favorites So plenty of common shore crabs that you can find around the whole of the UK. These are some bryzoans on the bottom of a rock and some more stunning patterns on this chitin. You can also find sponges on the midshore. But I can guarantee no finding of square pants. You can find common shrimp which are really charismatic i didn't have chance to get great footage of these because the tide is coming in so i'm just getting short snippets of all the species i find and again this lovely little um juvenile brittle star So 
One of the big perks of the midshore, as you can kind of see from that video footage, is it's very brown. And that's because it's really, really dominated by this type of seaweed here, which is a fucus. Now, fucuses love the midshore. They, there's a couple of species of them and they absolutely dominate. And this is actually a really good thing for the midshore. So when you're rock pooling, there's lots of things like, you know, rock pools and in them are all the species that don't like to dry out as well a lot of people find the life but there are also really large patches of rocks that don't stay underwater when the tide goes out and this is where fucuses love to grow and it also means that other species can grow in the fucuses in the seaweeds and under them so if you move these around you'll see that there are all these different types of snails that love to live in them especially this one which is a flat periwinkle there's different types of barn and limpets, loads of snails. You can also find other seaweeds that can live under it. To find things like anemones and crabs and all of this different life living in and under this fucus and that's really important not to miss out when you're rock pooling to not you know underestimate how important this seaweed is and that there is life growing you know in it and on it and under it because it makes up a vast majority of the shore actually and that's just something to point out with midshore is that these fucuses absolutely love it now the reason these species can live in the fucus is that you can see that it's nice and wet and that means that um species won't dry out as much so if it was just on the plain stone the species would dry out they probably wouldn't survive but living in this nice moist seaweed means that they can live there and the reason fucuses do so well is that they can survive and hold that moisture in whereas other species can't so as you go further down the shore you get more species of seaweed and less fucus because those species are better at growing when it's at lower shore and they can just outcompete it but you also find a lot more of them they're not really dominated by one particular species except for when you get to the kelp beds when kelp dominates and the further up the shore you go you start to lose some of the fucuses and you just get a few few individual species that really have to that the whole evolution has just gone in to being able to survive being dry for half the day so just something i point out about the mature I feel like we're going slightly back to normal here. It was a butterfish that is trying to slither away from me and this is the shot I'm, I usually get is just the tail slithering away. But when I was trying to find this species, I lifted up a rock and found this five bearded rockling. And this, you can tell it's five bearded because it has five points on um, its chins. And this is a really nice find and these really love to live in rock pools and kind of love the middle shore. They're a fish that likes to stay out of the way of maybe some of the big predators and uses the mid shore to do that. But because they're quite big, they, you're not often finding them at upper shore but it's just a bit too big to live in that stressful environment. You'll have to forgive a abrupt end to this video and a lack of kind of ending it properly because the tide on these super low tides rushes right in. So I was literally being chased at the hills by the sea on the way back up. So I had to rush off and kind of forgot to end it so that I can make sure that I get tomorrow's video that Uppershaw filmed, which was absolutely fantastic. So make sure to come back and tune in uh, tomorrow and check out part three of the video where we're exploring right at the top of the shore. It was a really, really special encounter and uh, I'm excited to share it.